Welcome back to Book Club Preview. Book Club Preview. <laughs> Today we're looking at Death in the Clouds, chapter 19, 20, and 21. Three chapters, but the chapters aren't that long. Uh, chapter 19 might be the longest one. And it starts off with uh, Countess Horbury uh, just worried to death. She has this paper, and in this uh, card or letter, um, says, um, hi, I'm Mr. Robinson. I have information about some bad things you did. Um, meet with me or I'll meet with your husband. Okay. Uh, she is going crazy because she has like a boyfriend or something like that. And uh, she met this guy and went to a hotel and stayed with him for a while. But she tried to keep it very secret so no one would know. But Madame Giselle found out, and Madame Giselle was going to blackmail her uh, with this information. But now, our um, courageous Norman Gale is pretending to be Mr. Robinson. So, the scene starts, chapter 19, with uh, Miss Hornberry really, really worried. It's, um, she writes a card and says, yes, I'll meet you tomorrow at 11. Okay. So now we cut over to part two, where is Norman is trying to put on some makeup. He's trying to put on a fake beard. He has some uh, bushy eyebrows he's putting on. And uh, man, Hercule Poirot's like, what is this? You're not dressing up like Santa Claus for kids. This is terrible. <laughs> Norman feels pretty bad, but he washes it all off. Um, Hercule gives him a mustache and changes his hairstyle a little bit and he says okay that's good enough so then norman goes over to visit countess horbury and he's pretending to be a professional blackmailer and he does a pretty good job and he gives um, mrs horbury clues that i just explained that she has a boyfriend and that he has all this information which is a lie and he's going to give it to her husband so miss horbury can't let this happen because if she gets a divorce, um, because she was cheating on her husband, she doesn't get any money. So she agrees, kind of, and uh, Mr. Robbins says, says, I'm going to give you two days, and he leaves quickly. Whew, his job is finished. Now, about an hour later, Hercule Prerot comes to visit Countess Horbury, and she is going crazy because she cannot find the money to pay this blackmailer. And Hercules says, hey, don't worry. I'm here. I'm here to help you. And I'm a friend of, he, he says the name of this, uh, this gentleman. I'm a friend of, oh, I can't find it. Who is he a friend of? Uh, Mr. Um, Baraklau? I'm not sure, Baraklau. I think this is the boyfriend that she has, okay? Um, this guy also is the one that tells um, Countess Horbury about Madame Giselle. So Hercule gets the whole truth um, that she went to go see Madame Giselle and she really begged her to help her with her loan. But Madame Giselle was kind of like, I'm going to crush your heart and I'm going to tell your husband you're a bug. Go away, okay? And Lady Hornberry was really angry and really upset, but she didn't kill the lady. And she's actually a little worried because um, it was really good luck for her that uh, Madame Giselle died. Hercule Perot learns all of this. He learns that um, Mr. Um, Baraclau actually recommended Madame Giselle to go to, um, go to Madame Giselle. She learns that... Um, Somehow, Madame Giselle found out about her and her boyfriend, and that's why she was able to blackmail her. And Hercule gets all this information. He says, hey, look, don't worry. I'm going to take care of this blackmailer. You can relax. And at the end, he gives her a piece of advice. He says, you know, why don't you divorce um, Mr. Count Horbury uh, quietly? You know, you'll still be able to get a little bit of money, and he'll be able to be happy. You'll be able to be happy. And there's other millionaires that you're going to be able to marry. And she's kind of looking at this and she's like, hmm, you know what, Mr. Pirro, you might be right. 
And so he kind of goes in and um, maybe he's adding some love or helping fix some broken love things there. I don't know. So that is chapter 19. Chapter 20 is with um, Officer Jap, and he is meeting with, um, let's see, Dr. Brandt. And he goes to talk to Dr. Brandt. Dr. Brandt's practice is doing very well. Um, he goes and interviews Dr. Brandt about um, snake venom and where to get snake venom, and he gets all this information from Dr. Brandt. Now, at the end, um, Officer Jap is kind of laughing to himself. And let's see, what does he say? When Jap emerged from Harley Street, he was smiling to himself in a pleased fashion. He was, <laughs> nothing like tact. Tact is like politeness or skill to work around a conversation. He said to himself, tact does it. I'll be bound he never saw what I was after. Well, that's that. And so... My discussion question, which we're going to lead to later, is what was Jap after? He's asking these questions, and it seems pretty friendly and informative, but there's some other motive that Jap has to ask these questions. Um, what do you think it is? That's my discussion question. But that's kind of how that chapter ends. Uh, chapter 21, Jap meets with Hercule Poirot, and they start to kind of share their information together. Um, they don't have a lot going on. Jap says, man, we don't know. Uh, we don't have any clues, but we can blame the French guys. The French guys don't have any clues, but they can blame us. So it's giving us a little bit of time, a little bit of wiggle room. But I don't know um, who's it, who's it's going to be. Who is the murderer? But he asks uh, Hercule Pro, well, what about you? What do you think? And Hercule says, well, man, I've got a system and I've got a plan. and I'm just working it step by step. And... Jap says, okay, well, what is your first step? And Hercule says, when there is a murder, the murder is always committed for a reason, right? There is a desire, and the murder is the action to get that desire, whatever it is, right? It might not be a murder. It could be something else. So I want to figure out what is the reason. And Jap says, you mean the motive? He says, well, you can call it the motive. I call it this system, okay? So he also has a piece of paper, and on the paper it has who has gained from this, um, from this action, the result of the action, and who has received something bad. If the murder has hurt you personally, you probably didn't commit the murder, but if you had some benefit, then you could be a suspect. And so he kind of goes through a list of all the people, and Jap, Jap kind of uh, laughs at me. He says, Okay, so pretty much your paper says, I don't know, I don't know, I can't tell. Um, and he's just like, you, your notes don't mean anything. And Hercules says, well, maybe that's how you read them, but I have my system. Okay. Now, as they're wrapping up their conversation, Jap says, man, I, I, we don't really have any clues um, that, that are helping us go somewhere. And... Jap says, oh, yes, we have the blowpipe. The blowpipe is a clue. <laughs> and Hercules says, no, no, not the blowpipe. The blowpipe's not a clue. There are three clues that we have, and I'm going to tell them to you. And he, he um, gives them titles, like in one of Mr. Clancy's stories. So the three clues are, one, the clue of the wasp. Hmm, what clue does that give us? I actually don't know. I feel like Jap in this story. Two, the clue of the person's baggage. Um, I'm not sure. Was there something found in the baggage? He had a list of everything, but we haven't learned what was in that list or, or what Hercule was looking for. And number three, the clue of the extra spoon. And then I didn't know about this, and I'm not sure if this is true, but Jap says, oh, an extra spoon, that's supposed to mean a wedding. So maybe that is like um, if a server accidentally gives you two spoons, there is like some hint in the future. <gasps> two spoons. Oh, that means you're going to get married soon. Okay, it's kind of like this um, predicting the future based on chance or something. And Hercule says, in this case, the two spoons meant a funeral. 
Now, I don't know if if there's something about the clue in that symbolism or if there's more to the clue than that, but those are the three clues that Hercule has found. That gives us two vocabulary. One, unbecoming, which means I'm ugly or not fitting well. Um, Countess Horbury's makeup wasn't being fixed up or cleaned and re-put. It was kind of getting old and cracking, so it was not looking good. Indulge is to allow, um, to let something happen. Not so green. Green is a term for new. So if you think of like a tree or a plant, when it's growing, that sprout is green, and then it grows and turns brown. So green uh, can mean new. Alimony. Alimony is money, usually a husband, pays to a woman when they're getting a divorce. Okay, so usually a woman doesn't have a job and she's just supporting her husband. So when they get a divorce, uh, usually the government doesn't think or the courts or the judges don't think it's fair for the woman just to not have any money. So she says, husband, you have to share some of the property and for a little while, some of your money. But like I shared before, if you have a divorce because one of the people was had like a boyfriend or girlfriend, then that person doesn't get any of the money. Um, dandically, dandy, dandy is a word uh, for like someone that dresses too nice, maybe in fashion, um, a male usually, dressing really, really nice and clean, maybe a little bit too much, too fashionable. <laughs> and Hercule is dressed uh, really, really handsomely or pretty. Imploring is like begging her eyes. Oh, Monsieur Hep. Hercule Poirot, please believe me, I didn't, I didn't kill her. Um, I can't do it very well, I'm sorry, maybe it's because I'm a guy, but she's begging with her eyes, pleading. Conundrum is a problem, and potty means crazy. If you watched any of the Harry Potter movies, they often use the word potty, right? Meaning, in a British way, it means crazy, like a, like a pot. Um, I don't know where it comes from, but it just means crazy. That leaves me with my discussion question, which is, what was Jape after? When he was interviewing Dr. Brandt, what was his motive of getting information? What information was he trying to get? Because he doesn't actually say. A little bit in chapter 21, I'll give you a hint. But what do you think he was after? And of course, please make your own discussion question. That is all the time that we have for today. But thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Book Club Preview. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.